Alright guys, so today's video is definitely going to be a different kind of video. I think most people that watch this channel obviously know that I cover true wireless earbuds and I usually tend to focus on budget true wireless earbuds. I like to find value out there in companies like you haven't heard of or just companies that aren't as marketed as some other companies. But a lot of you may not know that I still prefer to listen to music with over the ear headphones. I just, there's something about it that earbuds have not been able to replicate yet. Uh, so I love testing over the ear headphones. Um, I just kind of dabble in it here and there and I've tested, you know, a lot of different Sennheiser headphones. I have tested other Odyssey headphones, uh, Bayer Dynamic. I've gone through a bunch of different brands, but generally up until this point, I have not crossed that thousand dollar mark yet. So I don't know what sound is like once you pass that line. And so today, we actually get to test this out because I received a package by accident. Um, Odyssey, I've tested stuff out from before, uh, and they were supposed to send the LCD 2s. Now, I've tested the LCD 1s, I've tested the Odyssey Mobius, which is just a completely different headphone altogether. Uh, so they asked if I wanted to check out the LCD 2s. I was happy to do that. Once they asked me, a, a little time had passed, and I honestly just forgot that any Odysseys were coming in. Uh, and all of a sudden, one day, a box shows up. Uh, it says Odyssey all over the box. And so I knew, okay, this is the LCD 2s, but the box was kind of big. And then when I picked up the box, I noticed the box was kind of heavy for what the LCD 2s should be. And then when I opened up the box, I realized, wait a minute, it's in this big aluminum case, which the Odyssey LCD 2s are an $800 pair of headphones, but I definitely would not have thought it would have come in an aluminum case. And so when I opened up the case, I then noticed that there's some white gloves inside. And then all of a sudden I thought, wait a minute, this is way too overkill for an $800 pair of headphones. And then I look over at the headphones and realize this isn't the LCD 2s. These are the Odyssey LCD 5s. Now this is a flagship pair of headphones. Uh, it's an open back pair of headphones that has the planar magnetic drivers. So this is not even the same type of drivers that most consumers are used to, which is the dynamic driver style. Uh, these are using like magnetic coils. You don't get any kind of distortion with this type of headphone. Now I have tried other planar magnetic headphones in the past, so this isn't something that's like completely foreign to me, but this pair retails for $4,500 and that immediately is completely foreign to me. I am more what's considered an audio enthusiast. I just love listening to music. I love testing all different kind of earbuds and headphones and IEMs, but I am not what would be considered an audiophile. I, I don't really spend a ton of money on audio products. Uh, I'm not there for critical listening. I don't read charts for the headphones. I'm not looking at different measurements. That's just not what I'm into. I, I think there is definitely uh, a bunch of different people that are into music in different ways and like to listen to music in different ways. In fact, if you're very interested in measurements and charts and more expensive headphones like this, uh, definitely make sure to check out my buddy DMS's channel. Uh, we've talked about this in the past where, you know, I've always said, I know a lot of people in the audio community don't really see me as like a, I guess an audiophile, cause I'm not, I'm really not. I just love music. I love headphones and I just love to listen to them. I, it's just a completely different escape and it's a different reason that I listen to music than let's say what somebody that's critically listening to music does. But back to this pair, when I took them out of the case, I noticed this was an extremely premium pair of headphones, but the LCD fives are actually lighter and smaller looking than the LCD 4s. Now I've seen the LCD 4s, I've seen a lot of high-end headphones, I've actually tested a lot of high-end headphones, but most of those are at trade shows like Can Jam, where these open style headphones, you can't really get a good idea of what they sound like because you can hear everything around you. You can hear all these people talking, uh, you're using that company's equipment, so it's not really the same experience that you're going to get at home. But I did notice that the LCD 5s were smaller, they're lighter, the outside part of the headband was a carbon fiber, and it was protecting the leather headband that was underneath. And the ear pads on here are very soft, uh, they're very thick padding, but it's actually less padding than what was on the LCD 4s. But when I put them on, they're a very soft pair of headphones. There's not really a whole lot of weight to these, so they're extremely comfortable. And I really like the tortoise shell design uh, that they have on the outside of the ear cups. And not to mention the actual, I guess, craftsmanship or machinery 
that's cutting out the grill that you see on the outside. Now, like I said, these are planar magnetics, so the drivers inside are actually magnetic coils. It just has a different look to it, and these type of headphones generally have a different sound to it. Uh, but what I wanted to do today was just test the headphones actually on camera. This isn't listening to them ahead of time. Um, but I will say headphones like this, you usually do want to let play for a while, uh, kind of let them burn in a little bit and break in like you would a new pair of shoes. Uh, but I do also want to go back to this type of headphone is not going to be for everybody. I think if you're out looking for a new car, you can get, you know, an entry level car or you can get this high end over the top like bells and whistles car. Each car is going to get you from point A to point B but it's more so how you want your experience to be from point A to point B. Do you want like the luxury? Do you want the best of the best? Or do you just care that you can get uh, to where you're needing to go and you don't need everything else? And, and I think that is what separates this type of headphone from normal consumer headphones or even mid-range headphones, which I'm used to. I, I've tested a lot of Sennheisers that I'm a huge fan of, uh, but again, I'm usually in that five, maybe $600 range, and not any further up than that. So as far as the cable that these use, it does come with a copper coiled cable. Um, it is using mini XLR connections that you actually plug into the headphones. And then on the other end, you have a quarter inch plug, which I could not find my adapter to be able to plug into a three and a half millimeter connection. So I did have to order uh, this little adapter here um, where the quarter inch plug plugs into this. And then you have a three and a half millimeter plug that you would plug in to what you're using because the only amp that I have, now this type of headphone generally requires an amp. Uh, you usually need enough power to get the most out of them. But uh, the only amp that I have is the ARC MK2. Now this is actually a very powerful amp for its size. Uh, it doesn't have all kind of drivers once you plug them into your computer. So it's just simply plugging this into your computer. It powers it on because it doesn't even need a separate power supply and you can just use it as it is. But it does have a three and a half millimeter connection. So this is why I needed this adapter. Uh, and so that's what we're gonna test these on today. And I also have the THX Onyx which I have covered on the channel. Now this is a much more portable solution to using these. Although this type of headphone is not for portable use. Like I said, it's an open back pair of headphones. So it's going to play what you're listening to just straight out loud. Anybody around you is gonna be able to hear this. Uh, and plus, you know, a $4,500 pair of headphones I don't think I'd want to walk around and listen to anyway. I just, I wouldn't feel comfortable. I, even just the fact that, you know, anything could hit them or scratch them, they're made to be taken care of and put back in the case when you're not using them. So enough of all of that. Um, again, I'm not going to go into too many details about this headphone. There's tons of reviews out there. This technically is not a review. This is just experiencing a $4,500 pair of headphones for somebody that's generally testing earbuds that are under a hundred bucks or $200. I mean, we really don't go over the $200 mark. Uh, and that's because that's what this channel focuses on. But again, this is something that happened by mistake. I wasn't supposed to get these. And I thought this would be a good chance to just see how somebody that's not used to this would experience a headphone like this. So we're gonna go ahead and get to testing. Now I do have the ARC MK2 plugged in to the MacBook Pro. Now I am gonna use Spotify. I do also have FLAC files, so I do wanna hear some of the differences there. Um, but I'm expecting something pretty impressive. Again, I may be overshooting it, but if you're gonna spend this kind of money, I think you should probably expect the best that you could possibly get. So now let's just go ahead and test these out this way. Now you can see there's plenty of give. I'm not going to do the normal bend test that I would do like I do with other headphones, um, but it does have plenty of stretch to it. And when they're on, uh, honestly, there's not much of a clamping force. I expected it to have a lot more clamp than this. Uh, this is very comfortable. I don't feel a whole lot right here across the top of my head. Now this is important for somebody that's going to sit there and listen to music for a very long time. Now you'll know most headphones, you're gonna to start to feel some discomfort at the top, or if the clamping force is too tight, there's only gonna be so long that you can actually wear these. 
So now let's go ahead and pull up some Spotify. Now the first genre that I usually like to start with, with testing headphones is metal. And, and the reason for this is metal is fast, metal has a lot going on. So if it's a bad pair of headphones, you're going to immediately be able to tell because it's not going to be able to keep up. It's just going to sound just muddy, it's gonna sound congested, and I don't really expect these to do that, but um, we're gonna go ahead and test just some metal right off the bat. Okay, so almost immediately, this pair has absolutely no problem with keeping up with metal at all. And in fact, this has to be easily the best pair of headphones that I've ever heard when it comes to drums. The drums sound natural, it has a really nice kick to it, but it's not artificial. This is, this is basically like eating fresh fruit that's not processed. Like, there's nothing that seems like it's changing from what the original source would be. Now this is just listening with Spotify, which is already gonna have some sort of compression already to it. Uh, but let's go ahead now and switch over to some FLAC files to see what it would sound like if you are listening something as close to the source as possible. Okay. Um, yeah, this, this is not like listening to normal consumer style headphones. Now I went through every genre that I could think of. Um, I tested it with this ARC MK2 amp and I listened to it just like it was, but then I also switched over into the DSP button that they have, which is boosting your bass. And, and this pair of headphones handled everything perfectly. Now to, to kind of to try to describe the sound the best that I can. Now again, I'm not somebody that's going to give you measurement readouts or anything like that. This is a very mid focused headphone. Like it, it's focusing on mid so much that vocalists really do have this natural tone. You can, you can hear raspiness in their voice. It, it's pretty fantastic what instruments sound like. I mean, acoustic stuff sounds like you are in that room uh, you can hear the airiness in the room, and, and that's kind of tying into the open back uh, headphone that this is, but just planar headphones in general have a different sound. Now, in my experience with other planar headphones, bass is usually not the strong point, but as soon as I hit the DSP bass boost button on the MK2, it definitely got boosted. This headphone handled it though with ease. There's no kind of distortion, which is another advantage to a planar magnetic headphone. Uh, it still just sounded clean, but the bass became this subwoofer type sound uh, and it just didn't affect anything else. I mean, the, the mid still sounded natural. It still sounded very clear. Uh, the treble is very clean and surprisingly this pair is not as bright as I thought it would be. I, I thought the, the treble would be a lot more harsh and kind of have that sibilance feel that a lot of other high-end headphones have. Uh, and that's because they generally want you to hear as much detail in the sounds as possible. So if you're listening to drums and you're feeling the impact of all of the drums being hit, you still want to be able to hear the crash of the cymbals. So you need that separation uh, which this pair does a fantastic job with, but it's just not overly done. Again, nothing sounded too processed. Uh, so I definitely can understand if I was somebody that poured a lot of money into my audio products, and I'm sure it gets even better if you're using a more expensive amp. I, I, don't, I don't even think that I'm getting the most potential that I can out of these headphones. But I will also say, just plugging these into the THX Onyx, uh, which you can plug into your phone, that alone makes it where you don't have to sit in front of a laptop or a desktop uh, to be able to listen to your headphones. You can sit on a couch or your chair or whatever and just plug these right into your phone using that THX Onyx. And even that alone, I was able to get plenty of volume out of. I didn't feel like I was sacrificing uh, sound quality going from one thing to the other. So surprisingly, this pair of headphones is fairly easy to drop. I don't necessarily think an amp is necessary to be able to get decent volume out of, but an amp is still necessary to make sure that you're getting the most out of the headphones. I think if you just plug them straight into a source, uh, you're not going to be able to get um, as much as you would plugging them into an amp. So 
To say I'm completely blown away by the sound is actually kind of an understatement. I even went into this expecting something pretty damn impressive because of the price tag. I think if you're going to spend this kind of money, you really should expect sound quality that you've never heard before, especially if you've never spent that kind of money. Uh, so I can see how this can become addictive. I, I can see that it, well, if I have a $4,500 pair, well, how much better does this $6,000 pair sound? Because that's, that's how I am. That's how this whole audio thing started. Uh, I got a pair of headphones that were like 300 bucks and it was amazing because I had never heard anything like it. But then it got me searching and looking around to realize, all right, well, how much better can it get? And then you start trying other headphones and then you're like, well, maybe I need an amp. And so you start getting into that. And when you start doing that, you notice that all of these different headphones have completely different sound signatures and different characteristics of them that you could understand why somebody would be a fan of Sennheiser or Bose even. And I'm not even saying that Bose is comparable to any of these, but from a consumer standpoint, having that isolation and noise canceling is different than a pair like this that's open back, where you can just hear all of your surroundings just like I would right now. Um, so everything has its own different uh, just experience to listen to music, and I, and I understand why these type of products are out there. This, this is a luxury item, just like a luxury car is not going to be affordable for most people, so most people will never get to experience that. I mean, I've never even experienced first class on a plane. I'm used to just sitting in the back, and I'm sure that there's a huge difference between first class and sitting back there. And, and this is definitely a first class pair of headphones. I mean, I personally have never heard anything like this, uh, and it definitely piques my interest to start trying some more high-end headphones just to see, you know, what other ways you can experience music out there. I mean, this, I, I'm so happy that these showed up by mistake uh, because otherwise I never would have been able to test them at home with, you know, not a busy environment plugged into my own equipment, which now, you know, makes me wonder what it would sound like in an even better amp. It's a $300 amp with a $4,500 headphone. I'm sure that there may be better out there. I, well, I know that there's better amps out there to match up with these, but if you spend a lot on the headphones and you want to kind of skimp it a little bit on the amp, I do recommend the MK2. But guys, that wraps up the video on the Odyssey LCD 5s. There's really not much else I can say about these. But thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for more.